The following is a production of Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. So we really want to understand what's going on with the glaciers in Greenland. We expect the Greenland ice sheet to retreat, to melt in a warming climate, and we care about glacier retreat because it's a major contributor to sea level rise. We're constrained by how little we know, and this eventually means that we can't predict whether sea level will rise by three feet or six feet in a hundred years. So we're working in a fjord that's a few miles across and it has this big active cabin glacier coming into it that's hundreds of meters tall. What we've been trying to do is get measurements uh, literally where the ice meets the ocean. You can't take a small boat up to the front of it because big pieces of ice are constantly breaking off and falling down and coming down. It's a very you know dangerous environment to work in. We've been using uh, several platforms. One of these is the jet yak. It looks like a regular kayak with a few bells and whistles attached to it. It's a, it's a kayak body with a gasoline engine on the back. So essentially it's a robot which is adapted out of a regular kayak. You need a vehicle that's powerful enough to get through the surface currents and the plumes and the other dynamics um, that's not just going to get swept away. Uh, so those were all things that the jet yak certainly had. It was really um, incredible to see how uh, nimble and versatile it was and able to function very well in these environments. And it can measure the velocity of the water to about 100, 120 meters below it. Uh, we also had uh, a side scan sonar and with this we've been able to map what the submerged part of the glacier looks like, what shapes, what slopes, what holes exist. Um, and then we had an instrument that measures temperature and salinity. Usually when you look at platforms like underwater robots, they cost you know, an order of magnitude more than the sensors. With this jet yak, they cost less than the sensors. And so that's why we can take more risks. We were able to bump literally into the glacier. And so, so we're really making measurements within a few meters and we haven't been able to do this ever before. If you want to work close to the surface in areas which are either extremely turbulent or dangerous, uh, then this is a really good platform. A carving glacier is a great example. Working near in very high tides or very strong currents is another example. Working in extremely shallow water is another example. The first version of it we had was called the Cat Yak, which is a catamaran kayak that I would sit on top of and had a little two-horsepower engine. So the cat yak worked well, but it was quite painful to sit on it for hours at a time, going back and forth across these inlets. So Hanu Singh and I decided we should try and make an autonomous version of the cat yak. You know, one day, uh, one of the other scientists, Rocky Geyer, said, hey, I just saw this um, kayak. It comes with a jet ski engine. And as soon as we saw that, we said, okay, this is it. And then we came up with the hull, which had the jet drive, and it was a kayak shape, so we called it the Jet Yak. What we did is brought all the robotics background to it so that we could make it autonomous, so it could drive by itself, and, uh, and do a good job with the instrumentation. And then we put an autonomous controller and basically a hobbyist braid. It's called an Ardu Pilot from a little remote control car. And you, that can be used to set waypoints for it to go back and forth across the inlet. It can go for 10 or 12 hours at a time on a single tank of gas. The Jet Yak is useful because it can do these really um, accurate track lines in and out and make these really nice bathymetric maps and maps of the currents. There are a lot of places out off on these shoals where it's really rough and you really don't want to be in a small boat. It can be quite dangerous. Uh, the Jet Yak is ideal for surveying these type of environments. The Greenland trip was kind of interesting because it was uh, you know, it was a very high-risk uh, operation. It was funded by this special grant within Woods Hole Oceanographic, which was designed to fund 
high risk work that uh, most other funding agencies wouldn't touch. And so that small uh, you know, seed money really paid for this development. And once we had it going, then we could write bigger proposals and we have, and they've all gotten funded. This project has been a cross-disciplinary and cross-expertise collaboration between oceanographers, glaciologists, and, and engineers that have developed some of the vehicles, including the jet yak. This is what happy, contented oceanographers look like. So I think it was a really good idea. It allowed us to test a new technology, get really new, unprecedented data. And next thing I know, somebody's talking about doing measurements of radioactivity. They're talking about doing measurements of plankton, of red tide, all these things that we never originally thought of. We're building a third one for the USGS. We're building a fourth one for the Norwegians. And uh, some biologists at HUI are very interested in building the fifth one. That's the whole nature of academic science, which is, you know, let everybody leapfrog yourself, make sure nobody's reinventing whales, give them the opportunities to really use something you've developed, and that's, that's how you make impact. To learn more about Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, visit us on the web at www.whoi.edu.